Hi, I'm Rob. I am a maker or a CNCer, which means nothing to most people out there. A CNC is a machine that's basically a robot, and it has a spindle or a router at the end of it, and it cuts wood or other things, but I use it to cut wood. The precision and accuracy of a CNC is amazing, down to the thousands of an inch. CNC machine can make the same part hundreds or thousands of times over and over again, and they are basically identical, interchangeable. The tolerances are just incredible. That's not me. I like to make one-off things. I'll spend hours and hours making something, getting it exactly how I want it, make it, and then I'm done. I don't tend to make the same thing over and over again. In a business sense, that's a horrible business model, but I don't do this to make money. I do this because I like it. I'm not saying I don't sell things. If I make something and somebody wants it, I'm happy to sell it. Or if somebody even approaches me with an idea that is something I think is interesting, I'll make it. But I don't just go out and make things just purely to sell them. That's not why I do it. This is a hobby. I don't want to make it into a business. I enjoy the creativity of it, the inventiveness of making a new item or a jig to hold an item or making a CNC for my other CNC. One of the things I enjoy making is drums. I built the CNC machine that makes the drums, and I've designed all the patterns, found artwork for them. I'd, I'd like to think what I make is quite unique. On one of the first drums I built, I decided I wanted to make as much as possible myself. I made the drum shell, the lugs, and the rims. And what I learned was the shell I was pretty good at. And Everything came out nice, but I realized it takes longer to make the rims and the lugs than it did to make the shell, which is a little backward. And I kind of gave up on making the rims and lugs at that point. But then, like always, I had more ideas, more creative things I wanted to try, so this video is about making lugs again. I decided quite a while ago that I want to use primarily tube lugs on my drums. A tube lug is pretty much self-explanatory. The tension rod screws into the tube. Why do I like those? The main reason is they stay away from the drum, so I can have fancy carvings, designs, whatever, and these don't hide that. So that's the primary reason I like those. In the past, when I experimented with making my own lugs, they always came out big and bulky and unattractive. I couldn't get something as nice and slim that I really wanted. Here's the design I came up with, and this video is about building these lugs. The first step of the process is to build the posts that will hold the brass tubes. The wood I used for this is beech. I got it several years ago at an auction, and it's very rough cut on all four sides, but since I'm carving out the tubes out of the middle and nothing is touching the edges, the rough cut doesn't really matter. You might also notice I have the wood facing up, so the grain is running up and down right now, kind of different than normal. So the grain running up and down should make it quite a bit stronger with the lateral pressures we'll be seeing with the tube when the tension rods start putting tension on the drum heads. Notice I have a one inch grid pattern set up on my spoil board. You'll notice in a second this helps me line up things so I can do multiple steps without having to change bits in between. This next step is purely for decoration. I'm putting a beveled edge on the top and a groove on the side. The bit used here is called a threading bit. It's actually used to Put a thread on the inside of a nut or on the outside of an edge so you can screw things down just like a nut and bolt. The tool path I'm using here is a little bit unique. Normally when the bit drops down it goes straight down or in a spiral. Here I'm going all the way down and then coming in from the side. I'll show you in a second how I did this in VCarb Pro. This is VCarve Pro, where we create our tool paths. You can see here the actual tool paths where we set them up. This is where it drops down, comes up the side, wraps around, goes past it, and comes back up. And for the real CNC geeks, here is the tool path settings on the right side of the screen on how I got that all set up. And now back to the CNC action to see what I was actually talking about. You'll see how it drops down, cuts around the post, goes away from it, and comes back up again. 
real important because a normal toolpath would cut into it as it's dropping down. So we actually spent a little time trying to figure out how this actually worked. And now we'll speed the video way up and we'll see how it puts the grooves and bevels much faster. And now we'll use the bandsaw to separate the posts from the original board. Not much excitement here, just cut those off, keeping the fingers a little ways away from the blade. And we'll go from there. Earlier in the video, I mentioned how I like making tools, machinery, jigs of all sorts. This is the first jig we'll see in this video. So on this jig, I'll drop the posts into the slots cut there, push them forward so they're nice, exactly in spot, and then I will clamp them down, and then CNC will cut the hole that the brass tubes will go through eventually, and it'll cut the bottom off in the right spot so the height will be exactly right, and it'll also put a little bit of arc on the bottom so it'll conform to the round shape of the drum. Yes, I'm using just wood screws here, and if I decide this jig is success, I use it again, I'll upgrade it and use machine screws. But for this project, wood screws work just fine. And now it's time for the CNC to actually work on those posts. First step is it will go through and drill those holes. It spirals down, cuts a nice clean hole that's exact the same size as that brass tube and we'll cut the bottom so it's exact it's right height. And again, we're putting that arch on the bottom so it conforms to the shape of the drum. The great part about losing a jig like this is I can cut five pieces at one time right here, let the machine do all the work, and then I can come right back and put five more in, do it again, and again, and again. So in the end, I'll have 25, 30 different pieces that should be interchangeable, exactly the same. And now we'll speed up the video speed so this video doesn't last too long. And now we see the second jig used in this video. This one holds the post upside down, then it will drill a pocket in the bottom side of that, which the threaded insert will go into eventually. The first step though is it puts a little lip on there that catches the edge on the threaded insert. I'll show that in a second so it'll make a little more sense. And here's a picture of the threaded insert we use. As you can see, there's threads on it and it screws in that pocket we made. And on the right hand side of the insert, you can see it's a little thicker and wider. That's what will go in that pocket that we made on the first step of the CNC pass. And now back to the CNC video. I'll do one more at regular speed, then I'll speed it up. Putting the pockets in the bottom of those posts is the final step of the woodworking part of this video. The next step is to start working on the brass tubes. I'm using a simple angle grinder to cut these tubes to a standard length, 5.6 inches in this instance. 
it does a great job cutting those tubes. I'd like to think I'm a decent woodworker, but when it comes to metalwork, I make no claims of being even an intermediate. So when people chime in here and say I'm doing things wrong or you could do it better ways, they're probably right. Now that I've cut to length, I'm going to clean them up a little bit. I'm using a detail belt sander or sometimes called a power file. I really like this little tool. It only cost like 35 bucks a couple years ago and I use it quite a bit. Really enjoy it. Now I'm going to thread the inside of those brass rods and I'm going to use a third jig for this process. The jig is shaped like the threaded rod so I can clamp it tight without distorting the rod at all. Such a simple jig yet it really solved an issue I was having. I could not get it held tight without distorting the brass rod. So I put a tap in my drill to make life a lot easier. In hindsight, I was being a little too gentle with my tools here. I was constantly cleaning the shavings off the tap and constantly oiling it. I could have got by doing that a lot less often. I do have to admit that this is much faster and easier than doing it by hand. In the past, I tried doing something similar with a solid brass tube instead of one like this that had a hole pre-drilled in the middle. This is so much easier for a novice metal worker like me, and the results are great. It does cost quite a bit more, but suddenly now a novice like myself can make something very professional. I want to do a big shout out thanks to Micah from Cast Drums. He recommended these on a drum forum that we both belong to, and I have to say I, I never would have thought to use these or found these out there, so uh, without him I would not be able to do this on my own. Thanks again. Polishing these brass tubes was surprisingly easy. I just put up my drill press hand tight and used a scotch bright pad up and down a few times, made it nice and shiny bright, and I'll flip it over in a second, and that's all it took. And here's a quick before and after shot with a polished tube and an unpolished tube. I did add a quick layer of lacquer to those so it would hold up a little bit over time, but that's all it took. Eventually I'm going to epoxy the brass tube into the wood post, but first I want to scuff it up quite a bit so that the epoxy will adhere a little better. So here I'm marking where it'll be the center of the post, and then I'm going to scuff it up with my Dremel, and then we'll go head on to the epoxy after that. I'll throw it back into my handy dandy clamping jig before I pull out the Dremel and start scuffing up the sides. And now to the final jig for the whole video. Unless you count the one I used to hold the lugs while I put the clear coat on. Uh, anyway, this jig is used to hold everything in place so I can epoxy it and put the threaded inserts into the posts.
The first thing I do is mix up some 15 minute epoxy on my wax paper. And now I'll add the epoxy inside the post where the brass tube meets up with it. And now I'll twist the brass rod so the epoxy goes all around the brass cylinder. And now for the final step of the process, adding the threaded insert into the base of the lug. Note how there's that lip on top of the threaded insert again. I talked about that before. I actually lost the original video where I put the threaded inserts in, so I'm recreating that again. So actually this goes a little easier. The threads are already cut in that base. The secret of this is going all the way in but not too far. Because that lip sticks out a little bit, if you go too far, it creates a wedge and splits that right in half. Think of when you're splitting firewood and you put that wedge in there to split those through. Same concept. It's got to go somewhere and it'll split that easily in half. And finally, here are some glam shots of the finished lugs. I have to say I'm pretty happy with these. I've tried multiple times over the years to get lugs that I like and I can produce in a reasonable amount of time. And this is the first time I can check both boxes. My goal is to put those lugs on my puzzle drum along with these puzzle rims that, again, tie in that motif. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe. I'm getting close to a thousand subscribers, which in YouTube terms isn't that big a deal, but in my mind, there's a thousand people out there who are interested in what I'm saying, so I truly do appreciate it. Thanks everyone, I'll talk to you later.